YouTube has decided to not share my videos with everyone who subscribes. Please follow me on social media to stay up to date. The Expanse is a show that I will fully admit I haven't seen, but I have heard nothing but fantastic things about. Like, this is a show that people have said, like, do you like Game of Thrones without the incest and still set in space? And I'm like, yes. And with any of the other things, too. And they're like... Go check out The Expanse. It's on season three and the show gets pretty good. Uh, I have friends who who aren't even into sci-fi who watch the show and they love it. I just have not been able to watch it myself. So it is with a heavy heart that I that I bring to you this news this evening. That The Expanse will end on sci-fi with season three. But on the bright side, it's going to be shopped around elsewhere. And this is, this is honest to God where more TV shows need to go. Right, TV shows, the production companies behind them need to stop really holding on to the network, man. They need to always be looking at like streaming services on the back end. Like, yo, Netflix, I hear you popping out eight billion dollars in 2018, man. Hook it up because this kind of stuff could bring in a solid fan base. Now, this is just what it says: the current third season of The Expanse will be the space drama's last one on Sci-Fi. The cable network has decided not to pursue a fourth season of the show with the last episode slated to air in early July. Alcon Television Group, which fully finances and produces the critically praised series, plans to shop it to other buyers. Isn't that weird? It's a show that's not only a critical darling, but it does really, really, really well on the network, and it's 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 well-beloved, uh, is finding itself having trouble on sci-fi. I mean, then again, it's sci-fi. A show that, 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 uh, that, that you know, kills shows for other shows. What was that one? Defiance? That one? Whatever that show was, that was like also a video game tie-in that was kind of an MMO sort of thing. That lasted, what, two seasons? And as a result, uh, sci-fi killed off the American version of Being Human. Uh, it killed off um, that one. Man, what was the name of that show? It was it was basically X-Men. Um, uh, it was by the guy who wrote X-Men 1 and X-Men 2. And it was uh, it was on there. I forget the name of it right now, but that was a really solid show. Uh, shows go to sci-fi to die, except I hear Krypton's pretty good. Now, it says the Expanse transported us across the solar system for three brilliant seasons of television, says Chris McCucumber, the president of Entertainment Network's NBC Universal Cable Division. Uh, everyone at Sci-Fi is a massive fan of the series, and this was an incredibly difficult decision. We want to sincerely thank the Expanse's amazing cast, crew, and all the dedicated creatives who helped bring James uh, S.A. Corey's story to life. And to the series' loyal fans, we thank you most of all. You have to, you have to look at that. We've given you three seasons, fans. We've given you three seasons of a show that you love. You, you, you buy the merchandise. You buy the DVDs or Blu-rays. You watch the show. You, you come back often. You sit through those ads, even though it's they're pesky as hell. And we want to thank you by canceling it before giving it a proper finale. Um, now, The Expanse was one of the first series of Greenlight uh, after the change in programming direction at Sci-Fi when the network signaled a return to its roots of sweeping space opera series in the vein of Battlestar Galactica. The Expanse from Alcon and Sean Daniel Company, which was tipped as a potential successor to Battlestar Galactica, was part of a crop of sci-fi series that launched in 2015 along with The Magicians, which was recently renewed for a fourth season. I I've seen like four episodes of that show and I don't understand how the hell it's gotten four seasons, let alone one. I hear it gets better, but the act Acting is atrocious. Just, I mean, like, come on. As far as sci-fi shows go, I've seen better acting on Skinamax late at night when my hands in the, never mind. Also, 12 Monkeys, which was renewed for an upcoming fourth and final season. Now, 12 Monkeys, I've heard is good. I haven't seen it yet. Now, here's the thing, too. So it was re reviewed well with 100% uh, this season on Rotten Tomatoes, which in the realm of, the, of, of what we do here in terms of covering entertainment, that's considered a good thing. Uh, it also uh, has got uh, a 95 for season two and a 76 for season one, meaning the show's gotten better over time. Uh, the cancellation decision by Sci-Fi is said to be linked to the nature of its agreement for the series. That Okay, so the back end stuff does kind of kick in sometimes, uh, which only gives the cable network first run linear rights in the U.S. That puts an extraordinary uh, amount of emphasis on live linear viewing, which is inherently challenging for sci-fi genre series, which tend to draw the lion's share of their audiences from digital and streaming. Which is true, because people who like sci-fi tend to be more technologically evolved and like to sit there and watch it all in one go. 
Uh, the Expanse's Live Plus 3 linear ratings uh, started with 581k in the 18-49 demographic and 1.37 million uh, total viewers in Season 1. The Season 2 average was 475,000 uh, uh, and down a little bit to 100, uh, 1.5 or 0.05. And Season 3 is down 400k. So you can see in a million. So so you can see that it's, 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 it's dropping in terms of its live viewers and it's still... That's the thing that annoys me when it comes to this stuff is they're still on this like draconian Nielsen rating nonsense. Like I understand that like clearly they have a better fundamental understanding of who watches these shows than some idiot like me can espouse. But at the same time, it's kind of like when you hear like, oh, Roseanne had 18 million people watching it live. And then it's like, oh, well, wait, hold on. Wait three days for the numbers to come in from Hulu and ABC.com. I think, oh, it's, it's, it's really 23 million people. Like it's, it's, it's a lot of people are watching this kind of stuff. And the question there becomes, uh, how many people out there are cutting the cable or cutting their cord, which is a lot, um, a lot of people, 10 million people a year are cutting the cord right now. And so, uh, it's, it's, these kind of shows are having tr f further and further trouble, uh, getting themselves viewerships. Uh, which is one of the reasons why they need to adopt streaming. They need to go to Hulu. They need to go to Netflix uh, or Amazon. This is where we're going to find ourselves in a better situation. Now, it says here, uh, Alcom president says, we're very disappointed that the show will not be returning to sci-fi. We respect sci-fi's decision to end the partnership, but give the commercial and critical success of the show, we plan to pursue other opportunities for this terrific and original IP. Uh, and it was written by the guys behind Children of Men. That actually is is pretty cool. Um, and it's based on a best-selling book series. So ultimately, this is the kind of show where really you want uh, <laughs> you you want there to be uh, another network to pick it up. Now, obviously, the 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 key thing here is going to be. Uh, is going to be Netflix, obviously, right? Well, it could also be Hulu. Now, a couple of years ago, Hulu was only at like 8 million um, uh, subscribers. Now it's over 20 million. So they, they've jumped up a lot as, as more and more people have cut the cord and Netflix has cropped, you know, has cropped past a hundred million monthly subscribers. Uh, Hulu is also kind of upticked a little bit as well, which generally seems to mean that, uh, they have more money coming in in order to produce this kind of content. And I understand that they've got the handmaid's tail and that's their thing right now, but they should look into getting this because if they don't, uh, Netflix might, people out there might argue, but what about Amazon? Amazon, you know, makes a lot of money. They dropped a billion dollars. That's the estimate they're going to be putting down for that Lord of the Rings, the five seasons of the Lord of the Rings prequel series. They're good for right now. I mean, hell, we don't even have man in the high castle season three. So who knows what's going on with Amazon instant? No one. I'll tell you no one. But if this show wants to be saved is up for the fans to basically reach out to Netflix and Hulu and hopefully get some kind of bidding war and get the deals made in order to keep this thing going. Because given the commercial and critical success of it, it would be stupid for anyone else to just walk away from it and not pick it up and let it make them a lot of money.